Welcome to Excel Magic Tricks number 690. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my College website link, and you can download the workbook 686 to 697. Hey, in this trick here, this is one of these huge array formula deals. Four different array formulas. Boy, this will be a big video. Here's what we're going to try to do, though. It's pretty cool. We've done I've done other videos where we extract unique records and list them, but watch this. This is like got three twists in it. First off, the unique records come from two columns. So we want to look for Quinn Bellin, Eva Quad, Quinn Quad. There's one, there's another Quinn Quad, there's another Quinn Quad, another Quinn Quad. So there should be total six Quinn Quads. We want to extract just one. So here would be a Quinn Quad. Then we need to every time we have a Quinn Quad take the number from here and list them horizontally. So we're going to take uh, concatenation, concatenate, join two columns, and consider whether they're unique. Take these values and then slap them out this way. We need to count how many unique values there are in uh, given two columns. We're going to then have a uh, formula that extracts from two different columns and puts them into one cell the unique records. Then we're going to count how many there are. And then finally, we're going to list the values horizontally. All right, ready? This is. This is big. Um, a lot of what we do here is uh, seen in this video here, this frequency video. It's about 50 minutes long. It shows you what the frequency function can do and a lot, a lot about counting and extracting unique records. This one's going to be have some twists because we have two columns. First, we need to count. We're going to use the sum function. We're not going to use sum product because we have formula elements inside of here that require Control Shift Enter no matter what. We're going to say sum if, and what we need is a logical test. And what we're going to get is a string of zeros and numbers that are actually counting how many unique records there are. But we just need a string of trues and falses. And then we're going to say, meaning true, this is unique record. And then we're simply going to say, hey, what's the value? 1. And it will put a 1 into the sum function every time it bumps into a unique value. Now, how we create this logical test is kind of the heart of these unique item formulas, what we're going to do here and here. We're going to use the frequency function. Now, we need to create a data array. That's all the data points. And then bins. Those are the upper limits so that we can count. Remember, we're counting unique records. All right, so the data array. We're actually going to have to have another if. If, and now what we're looking at is two columns. So we're going to click here, Control Shift Down, and I'm going to hit F4. We don't need to lock it for this particular formula. We're, we're going to copy this huge piece and use it again down here. That column, ampersand, that's the join symbol, Shift 7. Control Shift Down, arrow F4. If any of those are not blank, <clears throat> then we're interested in them. If they are not blank, then what do we want? Well, we're going to, remember, this is all still inside the frequency to get data array. We want to try and get the ordinal position. So for Quinn Quad, that's the third one. Now, the frequency will, what we're going to do here actually is list Quinn Quad as a 3, but then this Quinn Quad down here will also be a 3. And those will be the data arrays. And then we'll give the bins will be just the row numbers, and it will count all the 3s. That will, in essence, whatever that count is, will be a true for our if way over here. All right, so the value if true is going to be, and we're going to use match. The lookup value and the lookup array, since we're doing a unique count, is going to be these two columns concatenated together. We are going to start with double quotes, tilde, double quotes. That's in case there's any funny characters. We're going to join that with this column. Control shift down on F4 and this column. Control shift down on F4. Now I'm going to copy this because we'll use it again. Comma, and then the lookup array is going to be the same thing, control V. But in case we have any blanks, we can't we want to avoid our divide by zero. So we're going error. So we ampersand double quote that converts all of those um, to text, and it will help us avoid a uh, divide by zero error. Close parentheses on that. That is the value 
that if they're not blank, that's, that's going to be dumped into the if. Close parentheses. Now, that just gives us the data array. Let's go ahead and look at this. Remember, this is all inside of the data array, F9. Control Z, it's all NAs because in the match right here, I forgot the last argument, comma. We need to do exact match because we're looking up text. So I'm going to put a 0. <clears throat> we're looking up text that's not sorted. All right, now let's see if we get what we're looking for right there, F9. And sure enough, we get 1, 2, 3. That's the quin quad. There's another 3. There's another 3. That means all the times that 3 is an indication that we're getting duplicates. Control Z. All right, so frequency, you can have as many, uh, whatever data's in there, all those threes mean that one particular record. Now, comma, the bins, that means the upper limit, we're just going to count. We're going to put all the row numbers, one, two, three, four. Then for this one, row three, that'll be the quin quad. The frequency, we get a count of six because there's six quin quads. So now we're going to do row of this. That gives us all the rows, but it's row 5 to whatever. We don't want that, so we minus row of this. We can't, that doesn't work either, because that'll give us 5 minus 5, which is 0, so we add 1 back in. Now, that's, those are the bins. I'm going to close parentheses on the frequency, and watch this. Just as we saw in this video, this is just totally amazing. This is a great way to get a, ready, F9. And what it does is it counts. So again, this quin quad. That was um, row 3, so the bin 3 said how many are, of records are these? There are 6. Well, what in the world is this going to do? Well, the zeros means um, those were the duplicates, right? So all of the quin quads got rolled up into that number, that 6 right there, Control-Z. Ah, the trick is that's the logical test. Any non-zero number is considered true, any zero is considered false. That's just perfect. So what do we do? Comma. And remember, what do we want if it's true? A 1. And that's for the sum function. So it'll put a 1 wherever, wherever there's a count. Remember, we got uh, row 3 got a count of 6. But that 6 just says true. And that'll dump that 1 into the sum. Close parentheses on that. Close parentheses, Control, Shift, Enter. So there we have 11. Our count is 11. Now we're going to use this, uh, this frequency part again a few times. Ready? So we're going to go all the way to the purple right there. Copy. Escape. All right. Now we need to extract unique records. You know, that seems complicated enough. But now we're going to extract unique records and then have two other formulas also. Equals. And we're going to say if rows, because we're going down and we need to to turn the formula off when we get past 11. I'm sitting in E8. So E dollar sign 8 colon E8. Close parenthesis. Whenever that is greater than this, F4. That's our uh, number incrementer as we go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So whenever it's greater than 11, what do we want? Comma, the value of true is blank. Please show blank. Otherwise, we need to extract the unique record. So the value of false will be our index. The array, well, we want, as we saw over here, we want this with a dash and then this. So the array, we usually just think it's a single column. But no, you can concatenate these. To, uh, as the return array, F4, ampersand to join, double quotes, dash, double quotes, ampersand, F4. So we got that. That's our, our lookup array, comma. Now the row number. Well, we need to get row 1, 2, 3. And then when it gets down here, we need to not include that, because that quin quad was already extracted up here. So we're going to have lots of row numbers. In essence, there's going to be 11, right? We have 11 different row numbers we need, because there's 11 instances of a unique record. So we're going to have to use the small to extract um, row numbers different each time as we go down. So small of what? The array, if. And guess what? We're going to have to have a true false trigger to tell us which row. Well, we already have that up here. We saw, if I control V here, we have that. And what is this going to be? 
F, F9 to highlight it. Tr uh, remember, this is inside the if, so any positive number is a uh, true. So these first five records, and then it looks like the sixth one. One, two, three, four, five, six. So Mike Carlota, and sure enough, that's a zero. That's exactly what we want. Well, Control Z. So small. Remember, we're getting row numbers to extract them because that row number needs to go into the index. We got our triggers, our true falses. So small if true false. Well, what is it that we want to put in the small to eventually put into the um, index? Well, we want the row numbers. I've already done that, so I'm going to copy that right here. Copy. Right. So the value of true to put inside the small is that. So we close parentheses on the if. We do not need the false. And now we have our k. That's our, as we go down, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. When we get to 12, forget it. And it will turn off. So that small, that whole array right there is lists all the possible row numbers that we need, right? And the k just extracts them one after the other as we copy down. Close parentheses on that. The index, we have our row number. Close parentheses on that. Close parentheses on the if. Control Shift Enter. And now I'm going to copy it down. So sure enough, we have a unique list. If I was to come over here and go blah, 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 like that, there would be a new one right there. So it'd be um, nice and dynamic, and that would update too. Now, so far, you know, I've done a whole video just on that, a whole video just on this, and we're stringing them together here. Ah, but there's still two more big formulas. All right, this is the smallest one of all. We just need to count all the quin balance in here. We're just going to use equal sum product. We're going to have one array. All we're, going to, all we're going to say is, is this equal to, and then we're going to have to concatenate these columns, all right? And we're going to have trues and falses, and sum product doesn't deal with them, so we're going to have to use double negative to convert them to ones and zeros. Anytime that, and we're going down, we don't need to lock it, is equal to, this, control shift down on F4, ampersand, double quote, dash, double quote, ampersand, and then this column, control shift down on F4, close parentheses, close parentheses. So this one's nice and easy. Anytime that's equal to that concatenated. So we see in the sum product, we can also do concatenating. Control enter, do not need control shift enter. There we did, you can see the curly brackets, there we did. But here we don't double click and send it down. So sure enough, we get quin quad. There are six records. Now we need to do a formula over here. Now I want to make the screen bigger somehow. I'm going to squish this in. I'm going to squish that in. I'm going to actually control shift down arrow, control one, and get rid of the zeros. I can maybe bring this in a little bit. OK. So now. All of this is going to be formulas that needs to extract. So for you know Quinn Bellin, we just have one, but for this one we need six values. Now here we were extracting values going down. Remember we used the rows because we needed an increment as we go down. Well here we're going to have to go this way, and when we get past this count, we're going to have to show blanks. But we're going across columns, so our number incrementer equals if is going to be columns with an S. We're sitting in G8, and since we're doing column, it's dollar sign G8, colon G8, close parentheses. Whenever that is greater than this, and this has to be locked on the column. When we go down in the next row, it needs to look there. Whenever that's uh, greater than, then what do we want? We need to show a blank. Otherwise, well, we'll use index. Now, OK, so index. And our array, wow, finally we're down to something normal, right? Just a single column. So I click there, Control Shift Down Arrow, F4, comma. Now our row number. We're going to be doing some similar things, but slightly different than what we did before. The row number, we're going to have lots of them, right? We still need to use, um, we're going to use this. We're going to say, hey, is this equal to any of these, right? And so for, we keep using quin quad. There's six of them, so we need six different row numbers. So of course, we're going to have to use the small. Oops. SM tab. The array, we're going to say if. And we're going to have to do our concatenating. And notice, um, 
actually for this first one we don't need we yeah if control shift down arrow F4 and ampersand the first one's going to say are, are any of them blank and the second one will say it, are any of them equal to there so for the first one we don't have to use a dash we just have to have our two columns if those two concatenated columns are not blank then what do we want well we have another if if these two columns concatenated F4 and this one since we're going to say are any of these two concatenated columns equal to that we have to ampersand double quote dash amp double quote ampersand this one control shift down or F4 All right so if any of those are equal to that and that one needs to be locked going this way but not down so F4 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 uh, whew, two ifs then what do we want well we need row numbers I wish I could like suspend this and go get this because it's the same darn thing notice I suspended it by putting a Notice I suspended it by just putting a space and then getting rid of it. Now, I probably could have typed it faster, but I'm such a slow typer. Value of true, we need our row numbers. All right, uh, close parentheses on that. Close parentheses because we had two ifs. Now, array, that's our array. This whole thing right there is going to give us the row numbers. Notice for Quinn Bellin, it should be only this first one, F9 one rest control Z but if we had uh, Quinn quad there'd be six row numbers so what do we need comma and we're gonna use the same columns because we're doing this extracting from a vertical um, column to uh, horizontal row so I'm gonna control V that's our number incrementer close parentheses on that close parentheses on that close parentheses on that and control shift enter copy it over I can't believe we did that all on one video you gotta be kidding me look at that and sure enough Quinn quad and there are the six values just as listed over here uh, Quinn where's a Quinn quad Quinn quad 319 Quinn quad 344 Oh, sure enough, there it is. All right, so we saw how to count concatenated columns, unique records, extract unique records with concatenated columns, count these, and then finally extract based on criteria that was concatenated, but we extracted just a, uh, a single value from a single column and put it into a row, which is uh, across the columns. All right, we'll see you next trick.